hey, once you've programmed the drums to make it sound more realistic, just select all of the MIDI and have your computer randomize it. And that is not how drummers play. Hi, I'm Mahmoud. I am a musician and music producer from Switzerland. And today we're going to discuss some drum programming Q&A and maybe clear up one or two misconceptions when it comes to programming drums for metal music. Um, now keep in mind, these are just general questions that I've had posted on my uh, two tutorials about drum programming, which you can find linked below. Um, I didn't pick specific questions, but rather tried to filter out the general questions that I got, both in the videos themselves, as well as DMs and general stuff that I get asked a lot when I am working with musicians one-on-one -on -one in my studio. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into the first question. How do I actually write drum parts for my songs? The first thing I would suggest is simplify. Focus on what the groove should be. As much as us guitarists don't want to hear it, but the drummer controls the feeling of the song. Once you know what kind of feeling you want to achieve with the riff, then start adding complexity to the drum part. But simplify first. Just drop in where you think the snare should be. Start with that. Uh, does it feel good on the two and three, uh, two and four, or does it feel good just on the three, or does it feel good on the upbeat? Um, for references for all of these ideas, just check out my video. I go way more in depth into that. Um, where the snare is is hugely important for the drum feel. Well, well for the for the feeling of the song in general. And once you've got that figured out. Um, Decide where you want to put the symbols and how intense those are. Depending on what symbol you choose in the end, that will largely decide how intense that specific drum part feels. The same drum part can feel more or less intense depending on what symbol you choose. Are you going to choose a little closed hi-hat that's barely there? Or are you going to pick the biggest ride and crash on it, that's going to make a huge difference. Um, so those two things first. And once you've got that figured out, that's when you should start adding the kick drums, depending on the feeling of the song. Maybe you want to accentuate the riff with the kick drum, or you just want to keep it straight. Both work can work great for any song, depending on what kind of feel you're going for. Um, like I said, for a more in-depth answer, check out the video linked below. Uh, question number two. How do I make the parts sound more like a real drummer? First thing I would do is always keep the limbs of the drummer in mind. Unless you got an octopus behind the kit, that person's probably going to have four limbs most of the time. Maybe less. I don't know your drummer. But keep the limbs in mind. Don't program stuff that is just impossible to play. The other day I even got a track from a pro studio that had just literally impossible stuff to play and they had programmed the drums for their client. And I had to go through and just fix all of it. And that that is not to throw shade at any studio that does that. I mean, most people maybe working in a professional environment, don't maybe program drums as much as I do, but you should absolutely keep in mind what a real drummer is capable of. If there's four hits happening at the same time on the hands, that's just not possible. You can't be hitting four elements at the same time. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing. Keep the limbs in mind. The second thing is velocities. Um, Velocities are hugely important to convey some depth and dynamics to the playing. That is also going to largely depend on the drum library that you're using. Um, better and more expensive libraries tend to have more velocity layers, as well as round ribbons, meaning 
per layer there's more different hits so the more hits and layers you got for the drums chances are the more realistic you're going to be able to make it sound that also goes for the cymbals um i find that people tend to program the cymbals too hard as in they sound like they're being hit too hard to me um i like a drum sound that has kind of softly played cymbals in comparison to how hard i like the drums to hit especially for metal we're talking here so keep that in mind for me that's a big thing um it just makes sense from an economic standpoint for a drummer to not be hitting his sim uh, their cymbals too hard because that's the first thing that's going to break on a drum set um so usually drummers tend to be a bit more light-handed on the cymbals especially the crashes and the china cymbals um as opposed to their snare changing a expensive cymbal just costs a lot very quickly depending on the quality that you're going for so i would program accordingly um one misconception that i see with that to make it sound more realistic is this tip that i keep seeing posted everywhere and i absolutely hate it um it's the randomization of the quantizing feature in any program they'll teach you to like hey once you've programmed the drums to make it sound more realistic just select all of the midi and have your computer randomize it and that is not how drummers play this is just going to end up sounding like flam city every hit is not going to be aligned aligned with another one it's just going to be randomly one is late one is early and maybe one is right on time that is not how drummers play um if you talked to any drummer ever they're going to tell you they're going to try and play on the beat people don't really do that thing where they're playing late or early especially not in rock and metal these days and if they are before the beat or behind the beat it's all of their limbs it's not just going to be the right hand is always faster than the left hand that's just just not how professional drummers play and we're the measuring stick is a professional drummer we're not talking about beginners that still don't know how to control their limbs so this is absolutely not how you should be programming drums so if you want a certain hit to be late have every hit on that specific spot be late if you want the drummer to play a skank beat and you want him to be pushing the feeling of the song you're going to program the hits early slightly but you do that consistently you don't want it to be random this is not how drummers play so if there's one thing key thing that i'm gonna have you take from this video is don't randomize the hits do not do that rather go super in depth with the velocities be super consistent in programming um changes in the velocity like if there's 16th notes straight 16th notes on the kick drum make sure you go in and change every single velocity on every kick that's gonna sound way more realistic than just moving the hits randomly so any any drummer that delivers a performance that is just random hits all over the place would just get fixed in post there's no way that product leaves the the, the that stage without getting fixed up so yeah make sure you don't do that sorry for the rant i don't know much about drums aside from programming some beats where do i start um i find that knowing more about drums in the real world helps a lot with programming so definitely start educating yourself on how drummers play a great resource that is completely free on youtube is drumio so just go check out their channel learn about rudiments learn about how drummers play fills learn about what drummers tend to pay attention to when they're playing so learn about the instrument itself so treat it like you're going to learn how to play drums 
just apply that knowledge to your programming, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's where I would start. After that, it's just about learning how the real instrument works, learning how, how to tune it, learning how the cymbals work and what they do, maybe even how they're made. Um, knowledge is key, really. So just educate yourself as much as you can. And YouTube is an amazing platform for that. So just dive in, find some great teachers on YouTube. Um, maybe find some people that are a bit more techie as well when it comes to what does a drum do. Um, yeah. If you need some more recommendations, just leave a comment down below in the chat and I'll give you some. Question number four. What are the toms for? The toms... Th there's... There's a few ways to look at toms. Um, generally speaking, they're the seasoning on top of the salt and pepper. The steak and potatoes base... No, not just salt and pepper. There's this kick and the snare and, and the hi-hat, I would say, are the fundamentals of the drum set. And the toms are there to give you more depth of flavor. So maybe they're the salt and pepper, I guess. So treat it like... You, you can treat it different in, in a few different ways. You can use it just to write fills, meaning transitions between song sections or different beats. Or you can use them as part of the beat as well. So um, when you want to tone down a drum beat, you might use... Instead of a cymbal, you might use a floor tom. So it can be something to use for dynamic purposes or just for transitions. Either is fine, either is good. Um, more advanced drummers tend to use them for beats as well and use them creatively, so there's no real limit to what you can do with toms. But at the basic fundamental level, I think that about covers it. Question number five. Should I program drums first and then record the music? Whichever works for you. I tend to write a riff and then knowing what the riff is, I program the drums and then I play to that programmed drum. Uh, I tend to prefer that over tracking the guitars to a click, but that also really depends on um, the kind of riff. And sometimes I just program a super simple drum beat just to get the riff out and then I go back and fine tune the drum. So yeah, whichever works for you, neither is wrong. And the next question is, how do I mix the drums? Mixing drums is a huge topic in and of itself. You can do so much with good source tones. So I tend to treat my drum mixes um, like real drums. If I'm not too lazy, I export them completely so I have actual audio tracks and not just the MIDI, especially for clients. For myself, myself I sometimes get lazy, I don't do it that much. Um, but for um, musicians, bands, clients that come through, I always print the drums just for posterity. I don't want to lose those tracks just because I decided to change drum libraries or something like that. So I print those and then I honestly, I just treat it like a real drum set. I, if you've ever seen someone mix a drum, that's what I do, basically. So yeah, um, treat it like a real drum and you're probably going to be fine. If you don't know how to treat a real drum, then that's a whole different topic that's too in depth for us to cover right here. What drum program should I use? The there's, there's two answers to that. What drum program should I use? The first one is whatever works for you. The second answer is the best one you can afford. Um, usually there's a correlation between price and how much you get out of the drum library. I use Superior Drummer. I have used Superior Drummer for the past 15-ish years. 
Um, I started with Superior Drummer 2, before that Easy Drummer, then Superior Drummer 2. And then when Superior Drummer 3 came out, I bought that with a few extensions. Now, why do I spend so much money on these drum libraries? Um, as I mentioned before, um, in one of the questions, usually the library is going to sound more realistic the more layers as well as hits it has per layer. And TuneTrack delivers a product that is just ridiculous. Everything is sampled in a million different ways with a million different sounds. It's seemingly endless. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And I'm a huge 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 fan of what they did with Superior Drummer 3. You can get practically any style covered with it. Like any. I don't think there's a limit to it. It is such a flexible program. It's ridiculous. Like I'm not going to try and sell it on you. If, if you don't have the need for it, don't buy it, of course. But for me, what it does, what it can do, I mean, check out their website, check out their videos. They'll explain it way more better than I could in this video, but by far the best program I invested in. And the biggest reason is the layers, velocities, and the round robins, which the different kind of hits. Other than that, just pick a drum library that you like, and you're probably gonna be fine. Whatever works with your system. The more layers, the better. Don't skimp on that. And that about covers it for today. Um, I hope I wasn't too long-winded, and I hope this helps you somewhat. If you got any further questions about drum programming, please leave them down below in the, quest uh, in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would highly appreciate that. And I will see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful day and bye-bye.